everybody it's dana and welcome back to my youtube channel today we're going to be playing with some products from the hero arts new release and this is for february 2022 we're going to do some watercoloring today so i picked out three colors of the hero arts liquid watercolors and this is dandelion teal and indigo and for the stamp we're working with today this is the swirls and dots bold print this makes a gorgeous background. So I went ahead and I placed in a piece of watercolor paper and I actually want to put down a piece of tape. Now the reason I'm doing this tape is just in case I need to re-stamp this, I wanna make sure that I line my paper back up correctly. Now usually I do put a little bit of adhesive on the back of this paper and I will still do that, but because this is very textured paper, if in chance I have to line this back up, I need to know where that piece of paper was prior to me stamping. So just by putting in the purple tape, it will help me line up this paper if I need to do that again. So all I have to do at this point is kind of like tuck it up right against that paper. And I know that paper is going to stay in place. Again, if I have to restamp this, I'll have the paper in there. And that's a good thing to do, even if you wanna make sure things are lined up completely on a um, design. This is a great thing just to leave in your MISTI, especially when you're using rubber uh, stamps. So I did put a little bit of adhesive on the back of that. I can line that up right against my grid. And then I can go ahead and pick which way I want my design to go. Now this design has a lot of swirls in it and circles in it. So I'm just trying to put it in the center where I'm going to pick up most of that design. I can go ahead and close down my misty lid. Now for today's card, I am going to do some heat embossing. So I want to go ahead and prep my paper. And this is the rapid hole anti-static tool. So I'm going to go ahead and put that over that watercolor paper. And I'm going to use some Hero Arts Clear Watermark Ink. Now, like I said, this paper is textured. So I'm going to want to make sure to stamp this with a lot of pressure on it. Again, I get to stamp this twice because the paper's textured. Now, if you don't want to stamp it twice, when you go to heat emboss, you might see that you don't get a clear impression. So anytime you're working with watercolor paper, I just suggest that you stamp it twice, just to make sure that your ink kind of gets into the grooves of that paper. So when you pull your paper out, you don't have to worry about the design not being complete. So that's exactly what I did. I went ahead and I stamped this out twice just to make sure my lines were good. And now I can go ahead and bring in the embossing powder. So for today's embossing powder, I'm using a silver embossing powder from Hero Arts. I don't use a lot of silver embossing powder. So I figured, you know what? I need to play with what's in my stash. And the colors that I had for this in mind were going to work beautifully with the silver embossing powder. Now you can also do this design in black or if you want it in gold, even rose gold will look beautiful. Once I have all the embossing powder where I need it, I can just take a dry paintbrush and just wipe away any extra frays of that powder before I go ahead and heat set it. Now, you guys have seen me heat set embossing powder before in the past, but I also like to make sure I heat from the front and the back of my paper. This is just going to guarantee that I'm going to have a smooth design when I'm done. All right, let's get into the watercoloring. So I have a little clipboard here, and I'm going to tape my paper down. Now, this paper is the exact same size as a card front, but I do want to give a little bit of a border around this design and I just want the design what well what I'm going to color of the design just to be like in the center part I don't want to color everything on here so with that purple tape I'm going to kind of mark out the area where I want to have that color so 
I'm not trying to measure anything out at this point. I'm just trying to get it as even as I can to just form a nice rectangle. And within that rectangle is where I'm going to place my color. And outside of the rectangle is still going to be white. So I went ahead and I made sure to put that tape all the way around the areas that I did not want to add color to. Now the best thing you can do if you're using this kind of design is make sure you really push that tape into that paper because you don't want the watercolor to kind of like seep underneath because it will ruin kind of that really slick design. Once I have everything done, I can go ahead and start bringing in my watercolor. So like I said, this is the liquid watercolors from Hero Arts and I'm using my glass mat for this. Now this watercolor is very vibrant. So I'm just going to put down just a little bit of each color onto my glass mat and then I can mix and blend those colors if I want to or if I want to use them separately, I can. I don't put the colors too close to each other because I still want to have room on my mat to kind of add a little bit more water. Now once I have my colors lined up, I'm gonna spritz down my paper. And when I say spritz down my paper, I'm getting this paper really nice and wet. Because the paper is nice and wet, it's really going to start moving that color very, very quickly. So I'm first going to come in with that dandelion color. Next, I'm going to come in with the teal. And as you can see, see that teal took off because that paper is really, really saturated with the water. I'm going to come in with that indigo and I made sure to tip my board at this point because I did not want that um, teal to go up any further into that yellow. But as you can see, when I blend these colors together, it gives me this gorgeous shade. Now I'm going to make sure to go back and forth with my colors. But each time I do, I want to make sure when I have the color I want, I'm going to heat set that color. So when I heat set this color, that's going to be kind of like my first layer of color. I'm locking in that color. Now, when you are heating bossing over embossing powder, just be careful not to kind of like melt back the embossing powder too much. Once I have this first layer dry, I'm going to come back in and start adding in another layer. I went ahead and spritzed my paper again, and this is going to help me darken up this color palette. As you can see, these colors work seamlessly together. I love the brightness of the yellow. I love the teal when it mixes with the indigo, and I love when it mixes in with the yellow. Once I have that second layer done, I'm going to come in with a thinner paintbrush. Now this paintbrush I believe was a number four and the one I used to do the wash was a number 12. With the number four, I'm going to come in in just certain areas and darken up those colors. So it's going to give me some contrast within that color. You'll see what I'm talking about in a minute. So I'm gonna come in with a stronger intensity of the yellow and you're gonna see certain parts are lighter, but the parts where I go in with the, the more saturated color, that's going to give me my color shift. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this in just certain areas. I don't wanna take away the yellow I already did. I just wanna add some detail to it. Next, I'm gonna come in with the indigo, but I'm going to mix it with a little bit of, excuse me, I came up with teal and I wanna mix that with a little bit of that yellow. So where the transition was, where I was color washing, I'm gonna get that nice transition color. So again, I'm not coloring everything, I'm just coming in and picking certain parts of the design. Next, I'll go ahead and finish up the bottom part with the indigo, and as you can see, now we have almost like a tone on tone kind of look but I still have that beautiful first layer. I made sure to go back several times in order to get this depth of color. Again, I'm only picking certain areas and that's what kind of makes this design stand out a little bit better instead of just being like a wash of color. 
Now I did want to add some shimmer to this. So I'm going to bring in my box and I'm just going to spritz this with some shimmer spray. This is also going to allow me to have shimmer just in that area because that's going to be our focal point and not on the outside. Once I get enough of that shimmer down, I can go ahead and remove this. And what I want to do is kind of stop that shimmer. I don't want it to go anywhere else because the paper is still a little damp. So I will just come in with a rag. And all I'm going to do is kind of place the rag on top and that's gonna kind of like stop the shimmer from moving and kind of lock it into place. And look how pretty this is. We have all of those different shades just from those three colors that we use. Let me tilt this up and you can really, really see that gorgeous shimmer that I was able to get from that shimmer spray. Now you can do this with a load of different colors. I just thought this design was really pretty with just these three. I do make sure to heat set this back so everything's dry before I pull my tape. Now, if you're doing this, make sure you pull that tape kind of back on itself. You really, at this point, don't wanna rip this design. So just make sure to very gently roll your tape back on itself. As you can see, I'm pulling, but I'm rolling the tape back on itself. I'm not coming in the opposite direction because if I came in the opposite direction, I have a tendency to tear the design. So as you can see, at first I'm gonna start from the top and then I'm gonna realize, ah, I'm going to go against the design. So one more time, I pick it up from the bottom and I roll the tape back on itself. And again, this is gonna help me from tearing this paper. Now, this swirls and dots stamp set is so pretty. When I was making this, I was always thinking about other combinations that I can do. But look how gorgeous it is where we just have the spotlight right in the middle, but we have the design that extends all the way to the end. But this gives me a focal point directly to the center of my card. And look how pretty that is. The design is everywhere, but I have a focal point and a center. Now, do not get rid of all that ink that's sitting there. I'm just gonna make me some background paper. So I went ahead, wet down a piece of cardstock, and this is uh, Canton watercolor. And I'm just going to grab it just to make myself some background paper. Now, I did have a lot of this ink down. I didn't realize by just that little bit that I had, I was going to be able to get so many backgrounds. I did kind of have a wash out of the yellow. So I just went back in, wet down a piece of paper, and these are going to make gorgeous backgrounds for any future cards I might have. I can die cut these, I can use them as full panels, but at least I know I have this color blend that I can use for later. Now the last one, I just came in with a eight and a half by 11 piece of paper and just went for it. I can cut these, this panel down to have multiple panels. So I just kind of let that soak in and I'm pressing that down and then look at this gorgeous color wash I have. So as you can see, I have all these extra backgrounds that I can use for future cards. So I really did not waste a lot of that ink and it would match perfectly if I wanted to use this for a sentiment as well to put onto this card. All right, let's go ahead and start building up the card. I went ahead and pulled out some paper that I knew was going to match. I believe this is the Paradise paper from Hero Art, but I'll make sure to list all the products below. And I'm going to go ahead and place my watercolor panel on top. Now I do want to use a wet medium on this because even though the paper was taped down, it still might have a little bit of bowing in it. So that's why I'm going to use wet adhesive for this. Now this white piece is trimmed down just a quarter of an inch on two sides. So I'm going to have that nice border of that green blue behind this panel. Now this is a super easy card to create. And like I said, you can do so many color palettes with this. But I love the fact that the design, once again, is all over this panel but I really just took the opportunity to circle in just on the center part to have your eye go directly into that. Now, if you wanted to, you can color this 
whole panel if you want it to and I think it will look just as beautiful. Now because I have a lot of embossing on this, I need to pick out a sentiment. I don't want my sentiment to be too big, so I pulled out the Hero Arts birthday messages and I'm just going to use one of the smaller uh, sentiment. Now I do need to make sure that I stamp this on coordinating paper. So once again, I'm coming in with the paper that I used for the background and I'm going to go ahead and use that silver embossing powder because I could, I really just want everything to kind of blend. So I'm also bringing that silver up into my sentiment. So now I can just go ahead and tuck that sentiment right into the corner and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and heat emboss this in the silver. Now, if you're new to my channel, welcome, welcome. If you're re, uh, reoccurring followers, thank you and I appreciate you so much. But if you have not subscribed, make sure to subscribe because I have so many future video ideas coming to this channel and I don't want you guys to miss a thing. So like I said, I will heat emboss this in the silver. And I think the this color combination looks so beautiful. Again, I will heat it from the back and then also from the front. Now I need to trim this down. I cannot tell you how much I love this little trimmer from Tonic Studio. It sits right now on the side of my desk and I use it anytime I have to cut down small sentiment. It's absolutely a game changer. Instead of me having to pull out my larger paper cutter, this one works perfectly just to cut out those thin sentiments. Now, I will have to confess, I love this so much that I didn't realize I had already purchased it, so now I have two. <laughs> That's how much I love this little thing. So once I trim that down, I can go ahead and place this onto my card panel. Now, this sentiment does not distract from my design, but if I place it right there in the center, it's going to draw your eye directly to it. Now I could have did this in white, but I felt by having that same color, it doesn't allow the sentiment to really distract from the design. So I use some thin foam strips and then I can go ahead and pop this up on the card. And like I said, I love how this card came out. This was actually my husband's birthday card and he kind of saw me making it. He had stopped into my room and I hurried up and like shushed him out and told him I was making a video and he just walked out. So I didn't want him to see what I was creating for his birthday. Now, since I have this panel finished, I'm going to put this on a top folding uh, note card. And these note cards are from Hero Arts. They're my favorite because then I do not have to worry about cutting down card bases. The card bases are already done for me. And I can go ahead and place that down and that's going to cover up my white card base edge to edge and look how pretty this is. All right, everybody, that is our sparkly swirls and dots card today. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and don't forget to subscribe because I'll be back soon with another tutorial. Have a great day, everybody. Take care. Bye bye.